than in the, in the area of religion. Know where you go where you won't see counterfeits any more than the area of religion. You know why there's so many different religions in the world? You want me to tell you why? Every once in a while I have somebody ask me that. They say, if there's just one God and there's just one heaven and there's just one way to go, why are there so many religions and denominations? And the answer is very, very simple. The devil knows if there was only one church and one religion and one doctrine that people would listen to it. And she creates about 500 counterfeits that have a lot of similarities of the real thing. And the lost people who don't know what the Bible says will just hear one saying one thing and one saying another thing and another saying another thing and that's to confuse people. So they'll say, we well, all a bunch of crackpots. They ain't none of you knows what you're talking about. And they'll go on and live like they want to. There's so many counterfeits so people cannot distinguish between the counterfeit and the real thing. That's why there's counterfeit religions. That's why there's so many different churches in the United States and denominations and so-called religions is to confuse people and mess up their mind to keep them from finding the real thing. Now, in the midst of this counterfeit, if the true speaks out against any of the others, they say that you're judging and that you're not supposed to criticize because one man's religion is as good as the next man. I want to say tonight, friend, that simply is not true. One man's religion ain't as good as the next man. If there's only one God, and there's only one heaven, and there's only one way to get there, then, brother, you better make sure you've got the right one and the real thing, and we're living in a day that's abounding in counterfeits. Somebody asked a man one time who worked in a place where they brought in counterfeit money. And they said, how in the world do you know how to, how to recognize counterfeit money? They can make dollar bills and ten dollar bills that look just exactly like a real one. You could, you, you could look at them for an hour and couldn't tell them apart. And they said, how in the world do you, do you recognize counterfeit money? They said, when one of them passes through, he just pick it up and say, there's a counterfeit. And they said, you must spend a lot of time studying counterfeit money. And he said, no, as a matter of fact, I don't. He said, well, we spend about 90% of our time studying the real thing. And he said, we know the real thing so good that when a counterfeit comes along, we recognize it immediately. Now tonight, if you'll get in a good Bible-believing church and be taught this book and study the real thing enough, you'll be able to recognize a faker as soon as you hear him speak. I'm telling you tonight, friends, the reason so many of our church members are getting off into these cults and off into these crazy religions and over tying themselves up in a knot in the corner square, uh, meditating, thinking it's going to help them take their sins away and, and puncturing themselves and winding up a, a monk in a, in a monastery somewhere or a nun or something like that is because they don't know the real thing. If they've been around the real thing, they would know a fake when they see it. Now you folks, that's one reason why I thank God our kids. I thank God. You know, if, my, if I wasn't even a preacher, I'd like to bring my church kids to a church like this. I would. You know why? When I see people up shouting, praising God and giving testimony, these little old kids will never forget that, brother. I mean, if they live, if they wind up in Japan in the service, or they wind up in China, or maybe somewhere, they'll never forget when they was little, seeing the saints of God shout around the church and give their testimonies. Those kids have been exposed to the real thing and all of their life they're ruined man They've, they're ruined for life they'll never be able to be satisfied with a false religion they said one time and it's my motto too I was born in the fire and I can't stand the smoke amen I tell you if God's ever put you in the fire if you've ever been around where the fire of God's burning you don't want no counterfeit you want to get around the real thing you like to be where the fire is burn it. I'm glad to say tonight that even though there's many counterfeits in the world, that we can still have the real thing and the right one. Most people have just about give up on finding truth. 
you know that? Most young people have just hung it up. They say there's no such thing as truth. All truth is relative. And it may be right, and it may not be right. Whatever turns you on, whatever you think about it, it just may be. That's a sad condition that our world's got in. Let me mention just three or four or five things here tonight that the devil is using in the area of truth. And all of these are philosophies and doctrines being taught in our generation. Now, we're going to plow a little bit deep here in just a little while. So just hold your seats and listen real carefully. Don't miss a word tonight, and the Lord will uh, help you if you'll allow Him. You listening? The first thing is the subject or the devil's counterfeit is reincarnation for resurrection. Reincarnation for or in place of resurrection. There's a great big rise in the interest in our day and time in reincarnation. Have you noticed all the people who believe in reincarnation nowadays? They believe that when they die, that they're going to come back and they're going to try it again. And they'll get them a little bit better body, a little bit better job, and they'll make it through better the next time. And hey, by the way, you know how a lot of that gets started? Have you ever been driving down the road and... And, you, and you're going down the road and all of a sudden you see a house or somebody over here and a strange thought hits and you say, I've been here before. And you know you ain't never been there. Has that ever happened to y'all? I ain't the only one in here crazy, am I? Okay. Right, you, you see that house you say, I know it. But you know you ain't never been there. I know I've been here before. Now you know what a lot of dummies have done? The devil slipped in right there and said, you were here in the last life. You say, that's right. I was here before. And they get to thinking, they get to talk switch or read some occult book and listen to some rock music. And the next thing you know, they think, I've been here before. And the next thing, they're about high spaced out, man. They, can't, they don't know where they're coming or going. And they think they've been here 50,000 years ago and they're going back and trying again and they're on their way up to perfection. The devil's counterfeit for resurrection is reincarnation. You pick up some of them old magazines nowadays, and man, them things have just got phone number after address or address of where reincarnation studies, reincarnation books, and they're meeting and studying reincarnation. By the way, do you know how come so many people in India is starving to death tonight? Do you know why? Brother, I'll tell you why. It's not because they don't have any food to eat. The people in India are starving to death because the devil has slipped them a counterfeit. They believe in reincarnation. And they got enough cows to put steakhouses all over India, but they won't do it because they're afraid if they kill that cow that it might be their aunt or their grandma or Aunt Susie or somebody who lived about 50 years ago. And they're saying, I just can't stand the thoughts of eating grandma. And so they won't put grandma on the table. And those cows are all, they consider cows and rats to be sacred. And it's a crime to kill a rat. They have temples in India and some of those countries where there's just literally thousands and thousands of rats. And those rats are sacred and they take food and feed the rats and the people are to death. That's the devil's counterfeit reincarnation. One time I was witnessing this girl over, I believe it was in Knoxville, Tennessee, I ain't sure. And I was talking to her and I said, are you saved? And she said, what do you mean? And I said, are you going to heaven when you die? And she says, oh no. I said, well, where are you going? She said, I'm going to come back. I said, oh, no, you ain't. And she said, yeah. She said, I'm going to come back and be a tree. They started describing a tree and how beautiful she thought a tree was. I said, you ain't done it. And ain't done it is good hillbilly English for you ain't going to do no such thing. I tell you, brother, I said, you ain't done it. And she said, oh, yes, I am. I know I am. And I said, no, you're not. You're not coming back as a tree. You're going to heaven or hell. She said, but that's your belief. And I said, but the Bible says. She said, well, that's your belief. Now, what are you going to do with somebody like that? What are you going to do with somebody that you tell them what the Bible says? And they said, well, men wrote the Bible. That's their opinions. Have you ever run into anybody like that? You know what's the matter with them people? The devil has slipped them a counterfeit and they took it. 
That girl's blind as a bat on her way to a burning hell and the devil's got her thinking she's going to come back and be a tree. Can you imagine how she'll feel when she flips into the lake of fire and people hear demons screaming, people burning? She says, I was wrong! I was wrong! I was wrong! You know why? She's had a counterfeit. That bull may sound pretty good when you're out here on the street talking. Son, when you get ready to die, you better have something real. Bible said in Daniel chapter 12 and verse 2, and that many shall sleep in the dust, shall awake, some to everlasting shame and contempt, some to everlasting life. Bible said over in John chapter 5 and verse 27, 28, long in there, the Lord said, marvel not at this. The hour is coming which all that are in the graves shall hear His voice and shall come forth. When a man dies, shall he live again? Yes, sir. He said, all that are in the graves shall hear His voice and shall come forth. They that have done good, under the resurrection of life. They that have done evil, under the resurrection of damnation. The Bible don't talk about reincarnation. The Bible talks about resurrection. There's nothing in the Bible about you coming back and it again and 15 or 20 times. you got one life when a man wants to die. After this, the judgment, if you blow it the first time, you'll not get to come back and try it again. It's heaven or hell then, brother, forever and ever and ever and ever. You'll never get out. Let me say that tonight, the second counterfeit is familiar spirits for the Holy Spirit. You hear a lot of talk these days about spirits and ESP and Ouija boards are selling by the millions. How many of y'all ever messed with a Ouija board before you got saved? Raise your hand. You better not be messing with them after you get saved. I remember they had one of them things one time and they said, now this thing here can tell you future. I said, aww. I was always real skeptical about stuff like that. I said, aww, it, it can. And they said, yeah, it can. And so we put our hands on it, you know, and... Here we went around through there. It started spelling out something or another, and it started saying this, and you'd ask a question, and go up here, yes, go up here, no, go up here, and all that stuff. I didn't, we thought it was just something dumb. And we thought, but you know, I thought that thing ain't really moving. They're pushing it. And you know, I never did really believe in that, but I kind of had a little bit of fear of it. I thought, well, maybe it is. I don't know. But you know, a lot of young kids get on them things. That's a, that's the slice way that the devil's got kids getting into witchcraft right there. Starts out with some little old harmless thing like a Ouija board, and they say, well, this is fun. Let's play it. And that's just the first step to getting into witches and demons and the occult. You better hear me. You kids better not be playing with them things. This every young person and most teens. Teenagers have got together and said had seances, you know. And they get together and turn the lights out and hold hands, you know, and burn a candle or something like that. And they start saying, oh, you know, spirit, come and talk. You better not fool with that stuff. I mean, that's more than, that's real, more real than you think, kid. I mean, there's more to that. And you say, oh, we're just doing it as a joke. Listen, the devil's very tricky. He'll get you to doing it as a joke. And then before you know it, the real thing will come in on you. Did you know that most of the people who go to the church of Satan don't even believe the devil? devil exist? You talk about getting the wool pulled over your eyes, man. Think about them guys. They go to a church of Satan, claim to worship the devil, and when they're out here, you say, do you believe in the devil? I don't even believe he exists. Isn't that tricked? That's what I call trick, brother. They don't even believe he exists. He's got them in there worshiping him. Stay away from tank cards. And card tricks. Matter of fact, playing cards is something you need to stay away from, period. In any shape or any form. Now I'm telling you that there's familiar spirits being counterfeited for the Holy Spirit. We're living today when you hear a lot of talk in the Christian realm about the Holy Spirit. They said back in the 1900s, the preachers preached on God the Father. And the emphasis in the church was on the Father and His glory and His omnipotence and His sovereignty. And then in the middle of the, uh, the era there in the 1940s and 50s, it switched and they began to preach the Son. And the emphasis was on the Son of God. But they say since 1960, the whole emphasis has now switched to the era, uh, era of the Holy Spirit. And so now all you hear about is the Holy Spirit this. 
and the Holy Spirit that. And you go into a bookstore. I mean, just lines of books on the Holy Spirit this and how to be filled with the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit and the moving of the Spirit and the latter rain and this and all kinds of stuff. And the emphasis now is being put on the Spirit. I believe we're living in a very dangerous time because people are putting the emphasis on something that they feel in a church or an experience that they have. And even though the Bible don't back it up, they're saying, well, I know it's real because I know what I felt when I went down there and old so-and-so hit me in the head and I fell out on the floor and I come to about five minutes later and you say, well, that ain't according to the Word of God. Hey, I don't care what you say. I know it's real because I know what I felt. You better be mighty careful. The devil slip you a counterfeit. The devil will slip you a counterfeit. You know when the da- most dangerous time in a Christian's life is? A few months right after they're saved. Right after you get saved and get on fire for God and you want everything God's got for you. If you ain't real careful, that then is when you'll get it. When I first got saved, I wanted everything God had for me. God wanted me to speak in tongues. God speak in tongues. God wanted me to jump a building. I wanted to jump off a building. God wanted me. To, I said, Lord, whatever you got for me, I want it. And by the way, I still I feel that way. But I'm telling you, brother, that's a dangerous shape to get in. Because right when that happened, first thing you know, I started meeting people. And they said, oh, come on over here. And they got me in their living room. And man, next thing I know, this woman, I think she's a preacher. She had me down a praying for me. And I was in, you know, I give it, Lord, give it to me. And whatever. And boy, they had me down. They had me in the floor, man. And she told me we was in the tribulation. And the next thing I know, I was messed up. I didn't know where I was coming or going. I said, the Baptists are not of God. And there were a bunch of uh, uh, heretics. And boy, but I didn't know. I didn't know what I believed. I'd never read the Bible. I'd just been saved just a little while. And boy, they had me over here. And I went to some of them meetings. And I've seen some of the wildest things you ever seen in your life. One guy come down there one night, and there's a bunch of people up shouting, running around. And, and boy, I came down here, and this preacher looked down at him. Had real long black hair, way back, come way back down his uh, uh, his neck. And sometime when he was preaching, he'd come out here with a microphone. He'd take up that big old cone, and go. I can't, you know. Oh, my soul, what is this? And boy, I tell you, that guy, he got a guy down up there, and there's a beating him on the head, you know, and tackled him down there, and he grabbed a pack of cigarettes and threw them back through yonder, and the cigarettes are flying, people jumping around. I thought, my soul, what is this? But I know, I didn't know what the, what the Bible said, and I didn't know what real, uh, scriptural, uh, truth was, and I tell you, brother, it was only the grace of God that kept the devil right then from giving me a counterfeit spirit. And you mark her down. You mark her down. When you get a Christian saved, you know what they want? They want their brother saved, their sister saved, their mother saved, their daddy saved. And then all of a sudden they go to one of these places and get a weird spirit. And then the next thing all they can talk about is, have you got the gift? Quit talking about people getting saved. They quit talking about people going to hell. All they talk about is, have you got it? Have you received it? Have you done this? Have you done that? What gifts do you have? Brother, I tell you, the devil's awful slick. He'll slip you a counterfeit. He don't care what you get on as long as you get off. I'm telling you how uh, familiar spirits are being substituted for the Holy Spirit. I saw a, ma- a wedding. I didn't see it in person. I saw it on film called Return to Sodom by David Wilkerson. And it was a good film on the subject of sexuality. And he showed the Mardi Gras in New Orleans where the homosexuals just take over for s- several days. You don't ever want to go to a place like that unless God sends you to preach. But I'll tell you, brother, uh, I saw that thing on that wedding and it had these two guys that had gotten married. Right. In a homosexual church and the preacher queers the three dollar bill. All of them was. And man, there's all up there and these two boys had gotten married. I never could figure out uh you know, which which way and way way supposed to be which one of them supposed to be with. Well one of you please kiss the bride. <laughs> and these two guys got married in the church. And they interviewed them. They're sitting right there on the on the front pew, and one of them had his arm around like this on the pew. They turn around, they're grinning, you know. And one of them said, "The spirit of God was really present in our wedding." 
You say, Brother Danny, I can't believe that. Brother, we're living in a damn counterfeit. There's a spirit there. You can mark that down. But I don't tell you it was not God's Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wasn't within a mile of that place that day they got mad. That was baloney. People seem to think everything they see or feel is the Holy Spirit nowadays. You show them what the Bible said, they don't care. They don't have no more respect for that book than they do a trash can. All they care about what they felt and what they saw and what somebody said and the word of knowledge and what they prophesied over them. They don't have no respect for the word of God. You start losing your respect for this book, you'll get off the right track every time you turn around. Every time, every time, every time you depart from this book, you're going to make something false from the devil. I'm telling you, that's why I made up my mind to stay with this. It's the only thing sure we've got. If you don't stay with this, you can't go by nothing but your feelings. I'm telling you tonight, brother, there's a man down there in Fox City, came through here a while back, come flying down Main Street. Can you believe this? Hit two cars, knocked one of them into another, and tore up three cars, turned two flips down Main Street. They put it in the paper. And he turned two flips, and the car landed on top of him. It turned upside down. And he come crawling out, a nut. And the newspaper come down there and reported it. And he called, crawled out. And they said, Ma'am, what's the matter with you? You're drunk? You, you're on drugs? He said, The Lord told me to do it. Now, them newspaper men just love to get a hold of something like that. Yeah, they put that in the paper to make it look like anybody that's a Christian is some kind of weirdo. And boy, they said the Lord told him to do it. And they said the guy got out of his car and he wasn't even hurt. And he's going around shaking people and saying, we're all saved. We're all going to heaven. Now, what's the matter with a guy like that? You know when them two boys, them Pentecostal boys, down yonder in Pensacola a few weeks ago... Blew up that abortion clinic. And I think somebody blew up one out west. They've been several around the country. Blew up. And when I was down there, Brother Paul showed me. We, we eat across the road. He said, right across the street over there is where that abortion clinic was blown up. And he showed us over there where it was. And it just blowed back in there of that thing. And when they interviewed them boys, you know what they said? They said, God told them to do that. Now, I'm as against abortion as anybody, brother. Personally, from what I know about the Word of God, the Lord didn't tell them to blow that abortion clinic up. They had no right whatsoever to do that. And they went to a Pentecostal church, and even their preacher didn't take up for them. He said they had no right. Why, that'd be just like you going over here and blowing up McDowell High School. You ain't got no right to do that. You can't. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We don't fight the battle of the Lord. Well, all they'll do is build another, and everybody's insurance will go up, and they'll have to pay for it. You don't stop evil that way. I'm telling you, the devil has counterfeited the Holy Spirit with a familiar spirit. And that's the danger of going to one of those churches where they're always talking about the Lord telling them this and the Lord telling them that. You better be weary of that outfit. Amen. My pastor taught me a long time ago, brother. He taught me a long time ago. He said, you better be awful careful before you start saying the Lord told me this and the Lord told me that. Now, you notice you don't ever hear me say that, don't you? You know what I always say? You all know what I say. I say, the best I can tell, we feel the Lord's leading us this way, or the Lord leading us that way. Man better be awful careful about that God told me this and God told me that. Because a lot of the time, God didn't. Now, maybe sometimes the Lord does, but a lot of times He don't. I'm telling you, brother, we're living in a day when people said that, that, that they're submitting uh, familiar spirits to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit never leads anybody to do anything contrary to what the Bible said. That's why a lot of these people are getting into such a mess. Let me, before I move on, let me point out to you a verse of Scripture. Turn to Deuteronomy chapter chapter 18, and we'll just do a little Bible study right quickly, very brief, Deuteronomy chapter number 18, and I want to point out to you a few words. To all of you teenagers, I want you to be sure and look at this. Deuteronomy chapter number 18, and we'll look a few verses of Scripture that I believe will help you in this matter of false spirits. Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse number 10. Now look at it. Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse number 10. You looking at it? 
If you haven't found it yet, I'll wait just a second. That's Deuteronomy, the Old Testament. That's uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, fifth book in the Old Testament. Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse 10. Look what the Lord told them. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination. Now underline that word right there, divination. Do you know what that word divination means? The word divination means fortune telling. Underline that word if you have a pen, and right out the side there, you can put fortune telling. The Bible said don't even tolerate nobody around you that tries to tell your fortune. And if they put a big old palm out in their yard and say, here's Madam Susie or Sister Mary or somebody like that, come on in and out, you better not go around them. I know a lot of, of Christian people have been naive enough and deceived enough to say, well, let's go down here and get our fortune told. We know there ain't nothing to it. What are you going for if there ain't nothing to it? What pulls you there? What draws you there? A lot of Christians won't go nowhere until they read their horoscopes. I'm getting ready to drop the bomb on that. Look at here. Divination is foretelling. A Christian has no business in the world fooling around with people trying to tell your fortune. They don't make no difference how many wrinkles you got in your hand. That may be that may, you born that way, man. That ain't got nothing to do with how your life's going to turn out. Or an observer of times. You know what an observer of times is? Astrology. That's the wrong spirit. You better not fool with astrology. If you got any astrology books at your house, if you got that much seed, you'll go home and burn them tonight. Or an enchanter. You know what an enchanter is? A magician. Really? A magician. No, 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 no. Here's this box. Here's this girl laying down in it. And man, he here this guy. And they all, have you noticed how those magicians? They look like the devil. They do. They got a they got a little black goatee right here. Nothing personal, boys. But I mean, the way the devil looks, and a little mustache here, and this little goatee, and they all, they, they dye their hair black, I reckon. And they just they put their eyebrows way up here, and they just. They saw that girl in two, man. And while they're doing that, she they've got them fake legs sticking out there, and she sticks her real legs down in here, you know. And so she's down in here, and they roll her around. She's all balled up in half of it, and them fake legs are sticking out the other side. And they roll her around here, and everybody goes, ooh, ah. Did you hear about that guy a few years ago that was going to make the Statue of Liberty disappear? I don't know who that nut was. Said he's going to make the Statue of Liberty disappear. I don't know how they got out of that. They probably, they probably rigged up some kind of light flashing on it and put it in shadow, you know, and try to make it look like, I don't know what the Bible said about that bunch. They said, there shall not be found those things among you. This has nothing to do with Christianity. This has nothing to do with the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit of God ain't in a sideshow, brother. God worked miracles, but the Lord don't work miracles to put on an act people and get their money. He puts them on to bring honor to Jesus Christ. He flies up here jerking and rabbits out of hat and stuff like that tonight, that wouldn't be to honor God. Brother, every time God works a miracle, He does it for a reason. Look at there at the last part of verse 10. Or a witch. And it didn't say a bad witch and a good witch. They ain't but one kind of witch. They say old so-and-so down there, she's a good witch. There ain't no such animal. The Bible just says, witch! Back when I was little old, what's her name? What was her name? That girl that rode that broom and come on TV and bewitched. That was the name of it. Samantha or something like that. And boy, she'd fly through that. She could do this and that. And oh, wasn't that cute? That's just a little entertainment at night. That was promoting witchcraft. It was of the devil, brother. The Lord said not to have a witch around you. Witch fools with things that are supernatural. The next word there. Verse 11. Or a what? Charmer. You know what a charmer is? A charmer is somebody that's going to hypnotize somebody. You know. 
You're getting very sleepy. You're getting very sleepy. Your eyes are heavy. We used to do that. We used to get something swing it in front of my sister's face. Or they'd do it and say, you're, and it never did work. Man, it wouldn't surprise me if a devil wasn't about to get in on us right there. Well, look at what else he said there in verse 11. Verse 11, or a consulter with familiar spirits. That's what I'm preaching about right now. A consulter with uh, familiar spirits. You know what that means? Communication with the dead. Or a necromancer. Or a wizard. Or a necromancer. A wizard is a sorcerer. Or a sorcerer. Like, he may... <laughs> He man and uh, what's that other fellow's name on that? Skeletor, yeah. And and so and so and on that cartoon it says the sorceress. You know what that is? You know what a sorceress is? Man, it, it's it's a wizard. It's a witch. It's a devil. And jackal. Where they go out there and they'd eat all corn. And that's funny. Cartoons was funny back in them days. And Bugs Bunny. I always liked Bugs Bunny and all those. Man, these days, they're fooling with, they're fooling with witchcraft nowadays. Even the little bitty kids, two and three years old, the old preacher. I think that's, that's ridiculous. You're, you're crazy. I tell you, the Bible said not to mess around with familiar spirits or sorcery or wizards or witches. That might be why our kids is hard to make behave nowadays. Stuff like that. A lot of it. I ain't saying all of them's like that because I don't know. But I know some are. And I'll tell you something else. Necromancer. What that is? Communication with dead people. Talking to the dead. Look at verse 12. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. God, I hate it. It's, it's sick and it's of the devil. That was not of God. None of those things I just mentioned are of God. Counterfeits for the Holy Spirit. If you didn't hear that message Dr. Bob Gray preached Tuesday night on how he talked about the charismatic movement being a counterfeit for the fullness of the Spirit, you ought to get that tape and listen to it. He's right. He's right. Let me say number three tonight. Right quickly. We're going to move on. Number three, the third thing the devil's counterfeiting is faith healing for divine healing. See, faith healing for divine healing. And there's so many, how many of you ever heard of faith healers? Raise your hand. All right, you know what they are? They are people who go around from town to town or get on the radio or on television and they say, now listen to me, I have this great power with God and I'm a faith healer. I've got enough faith to get you healed. It don't matter how sick you are. It don't matter what's wrong with you. I can heal you because I've got the faith. Now that's a counterfeit for divine healing. There is such a thing in the Bible as divine healing. As a matter of fact, all healing is essentially divine. I mean, the doctor can put, take you or your insides out or put a little medication on you and sew you up, but you don't get better unless God lets you get better. So in a sense, all healing is divine. And sometimes it's instantaneous and sometimes it's slow. God can heal. I want to tell you something, brother. This bunch of faith healers is a bunch of hogwash. They get on the radio. Old brother, oh, I can say brother. Old what's his name? You in. Some of them, they're sending out, sending out anointed scouts, man. Really? Really? Somebody, you got one, ain't you, brother? See that man right there? He believes in that kind of stuff. One of our deacons. Do you know what? Here's what it is. It's a shower cap you put on the head. And it's got an outline, a picture of his hand. So he can have his hand laid on you while you're taking a shower. Now, can you, can you get over that? Is that ever something, brother? I mean, here he is, old brother so-and-so, laying his hand on me in the shower. 
I wouldn't want his hand on me in no shower. Or in hell yours or nobody else's. Now to you, brother, that's a substitute of faith healing for divine healing. I like what that preacher said one time. This guy's on the radio and he said, All right now, folks. I know you're out there, and you've got a bad back. Oh, God just showed me right there. You've got a bad back. Now, you know with 30,000 people out there listening, somebody's going to have a bad back. Some dear old soul out there said, oh, He's talking to me. He's talking to me. And he says, Now, just put your hand on the radio. Put your hand on the radio for a point of contact. And the guy said, Put your hand in the back of the radio if you really want a point of contact. <laughs> I'll give you a jolt, brother. I mean, you'll feel the power if you'll put it in the back of the radio. But I tell you, brother, that's faith healing for divine healing. You know what they say? Their doctrine is this. As long as you're out, your healing holds out. That is not a Bible doctrine. The Bible knows nothing of that kind of where you get yourself psyched up into an emotional state where you say, I believe it, 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 and then on home you doubt, and it comes back. That's what their doctrine is, brother. That's what they believe. They believe if your faith holds out, your healing holds out. But if you doubt, your healing will come back. Or your sickness will come back. And they'll say, well, you doubted. Come back here and I'll have to heal you again. If God heals you, brother, you'll be better when you get home. And you'll be better tomorrow and the next day and the next day. Now, there's one case in the Bible where the Lord told this woman, He said, sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. But he didn't tell her not to out on the way home. It's, it's demons going to come back and get in you, or you're going to get sick again. That's that's substituting and counterfeiting faith healing for divine healing. They say if you're sick, it's because you have a sin in your life, and that's making a lot of poor old mamas doubt their salvation. Boy, it makes me mad, man. Makes me mad for them to do them old people like that. I think a poor old grandma sending that bunch every dime to make off their social security. And grandma searching her heart every day for some sin in her life. And she can't get better from cancer because that lying bird done told her she had sin in her life. And that's why she can't get better. Brother, that's a crook! She's probably closer to God than that bird's ever been. Man, have an audacity to tell an old sick woman that she's got sin in her life, the reason she can't get healed. That's a pretty low down thing to say to an old soul. Well, Brother John there has told me they've been people trying to heal you before, ain't they, brother? And they probably told you it's because you didn't have enough faith. You probably had twice more than they did. Have them healing lines, you come around there and say, now heal, 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 heal. They got this special way of saying it, you know. I go, what's his name? Oh, Ainsley. He goes, heal. Okay. Like and he hits you right there in the head, and you're supposed to fall down, and you're supposed to be better when you get up. Now, the way they got that up is this they'll say, if you get healed, they get the credit. Oh, he done it again. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Everybody. And it shows a spotlight on him and send in a bunch of money. But if you don't get healed, they say, sorry, you didn't have enough faith. So no matter which way it turns out, he looks good. Ain't that a slick operating bunch, brother? Can you imagine that? Hey, man, she's got enough faith, she don't need to be coming to you. That's counterfeits. Makes people think all healing is just a bunch of junk, and it's not. That's a counterfeit, the devil. And by the way, let me say this that has scared us Baptists out of praying for healing. It's not wrong for you to pray God to heal your body when you get sick. I've been like myself. I'll get sick as a dog, and I'll think, well, I can't pray for God to heal me. I'll be a, a Holy Ghost, <laughs> something other than else, and I'll be some kind of weirdo. No! The devil's used that counterfeit to keep us from praying for our healing. There ain't a thing go wrong with you praying to God to touch your body when you get sick. That's the first thing I think of, man. When I start getting sick, I say, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, help me. I tell you, that's a counterfeit. Well, I told you about the woman and the loaves of bread and that stuff, so I'm going to move right on. Let me say fourthly tonight, the fourth counterfeit is this, man's word for God's word. 
That's counterfeit. There, all you hear nowadays is man's word, man's word, man's opinion. If we don't have the Word of God, all we have is man's opinion. That's what it boils down to, friends. There's no getting out of it. They make fun of us, some people do, for believing that every word in that Bible is true. They sell all that church, all oh, they just believe that old King James Bible, and they think it's perfect, no mistakes are in it, and we know all these other versions are just as good. I want to tell you something. If we don't have the Word of God, you know what we got? Man's opinion. That's all we've got. We don't have nothing else if we don't have the Word of God. The truth is, we just don't profess something we don't believe. We say we believe the Bible, we mean we believe the Bible. We believe the Bible was the Word of God, we believe the Bible is the Word of God. You check me out and see if I'm telling you the truth. Most churches and most, I'm talking about Baptist churches, and most Christian schools and most missionaries have in their statement of faith, we believe that the Bible was the inspired, infallible Word of God. Boy, that sounds good, don't it? And in the last part it says, in the original manuscripts. You know what that means, don't you? That means to believe the Bible. They believed there was at one time a Bible that was right, but it's all gone now, and all we have now is just translations. And none of them really is infallible. That just the old the original manuscripts were infallible. That's what hogwash. I heard Jack Kyle's preach a message this evening. Three on my soul, brother. It three on my soul. He was preaching on logic proves the King James Bible. Now, I tell you, man, I like to shout it. That is one of the best sermons I've heard all that long. He was talking about it. He said, "Little boys, if we ain't got the Word of God, if this Bible ain't the Word of God, where is the Word of God? The Word of God's nowhere to be found. Why would God say preach the Word if you don't even have the Word to preach? Man's Word is being counterfeited for God's Word. For 300 years in this country, the United States had a Bible. And when a man said the Bible, you knew what he's talking about. Thanks to all them people that wanted to clear up the confusion, we're in the biggest mess now in this country we've ever been. A lost man told me, downtown, you've heard me tell about it. I told him, I said, you ought to get saved. And I said, well, the Bible says it. He said, all men wrote the Bible. And I said, yeah, but God used them and everything. He said, yeah, but what about all these new versions coming out now? Everybody just puts in there what they want. A lost man told me that. You'd think some of these smart alecks could figure that out, wouldn't you? It's caused more confusion than it's ever helped. What is God's Word? Where is God's Word? Is it in the living Bible? You say, now, Brother Danny, I think one version of the Bible is just as good as any other version. You don't know how dumb that sounds. Amen. What about where they disagree with each other? Which one of them is right? You say, well, listen, says who? Who told you? How do you know it's which one's right? You said, well, really, they're all the same. You just told another begging. You don't read them very much if you think they're all the same. They contradict themselves in thousands of places. Just in the New Testament. You ought to get that little track entitled, and brother, look at the differences between the King James Bible and the Living Bible and the Good News for Modern Man and all those. Hey, man, if one of them says one thing and another one says another thing, they both can't be right. Counterfeits. Luke chapter 24, when the dying thief was getting saved, you know what he says in this book? Lord, remember me when you come to your kingdom. You know what he says in the modern versions? Jesus, when you come to your kingdom, took that poor wretch's salvation right out of his mouth. And he called him Lord. The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You don't get saved by believing Jesus is a human teacher. You get saved, saved by believing He's Lord. In Acts 8, 37, where the Philip was witnessing to the Ethiopian eunuch, and he's about ready to get saved. 
You know what some of those new modern versions about? You know, we studied this Wednesday night. You've got your notes there, so I don't know. I'll just hit it where it says, I believe that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, verse 37 is out. It's disappeared. One of those Bibles, I, I don't know which one right off hand. I got them all around in here somewhere. But I tell you, brother, that one of them says, verse 36, went down in water, and this and that, this and that, and then he's got a 37 and a little line, and then 38. That's the plan of salvation. Takes out the deity of Christ in 1 Timothy 3.16. The deity of Christ in Luke 2.33. I'll tell you, brother, all those new Bibles are nothing but counterfeits. God's Word being counterfeited by man's Word. Just like Curly on the Three Stooges. One time I remember on Three Stooges, a long time ago when I was little. Believe it, Curly had to Somebody, Mo, asked him what time was it. And he pulled up his sleeve and he had three watches. There's one, there's one, there's one. He said, what are you doing all them watches? He said, this one is three minutes fast every two hours. This one is five slow every four hours. This one runs about six minutes slow every 24 hours. And he scratched his head and he said, well, how, what time is it right now? He reached over here and pulled out a big gold pocket watch and said, two o'clock. <laughs> That kind of reminds me of this Bible, Bible brother. Well, this one over here, the Living Bible says this. The uh, RSV says this. The New ASV says that. The uh, Old ASV says that. The NIV says this. The New World Translation says this. The other verse says this. Dewey says this. This one says that. This one says that. Well, what did God say? Here's what God said. And this is right here. What time is it? Right here in this book. And I tell you, it's just about sin nowadays. You can't even listen to a radio preacher. Man, you stay start reading a verse and you say, What are they reading? Has that happened to y'all lately? You read a verse and you say, Well, Brother Danny's been quoting that wrong. I done memorized that wrong. No, you ain't. You've heard it right. You've heard it the way the old preachers back in the days gone by and knew it. This modern bunch is counterfeiting man's word for God's word. I tell you, brother, over in John 14 where it says, In my Father's house are many mansions. You know what them new Bibles say? In my Father's house are many rooms. Wouldn't it be a joke if the Lord just said at the judgment, some guy come up there and he's got his ASD. And the Lord says, all right, now what does yours say? He'll say, in my Father's house are many rooms. Oh, okay, we got a little room for you right over here in the corner of Glory Land. Put him in the, in the broom closet. Say, now that's where you got to live. That's what the Bible said. That's when you said was right. You stay in that room. Man, I'm going to come up there and say, Lord, mine says a mansion. Mine says a mansion right here. Say, okay, right down here on the corner of Glory Boulevard, Brother Danny. Just move right in. Yeah. All them, them guys cutting, cutting verses out of the Bible, old Jehudi. He's pen knife boy. Like Jeremiah said over there, that man, them cutting them verses out, cutting all them names out. Wouldn't it, Reader's Digest, wouldn't it be a joke? If them guys cut their name out of the book of life. <laughs> I mean, I know that ain't going to happen, but wouldn't that be something? And them professors come up there and say, Well, Lord, here I am. Say, well, hey, man, you, you ain't even in it. Man, you cut yourself out. Amen. <laughs> to you, brother, we're living in a day of counterfeits. You know, I heard about this guy one time. He's going to cut some boards, make him a chicken coop. And he sawed off this one board and he used his ruler. Sawed it off there and had it just right. So he throwed his ruler down. And he got his next board and measured it by that first board. Made a mark, cut it off. Then he got his next board and measured it by that last one. Cut it off. Got his next board and measured it by Cut it off. By the time he got through, his last board was about that much longer than his first board. He said, how in the world did I do that? I went, you know why? He kept measuring them by the last board. What he should have done is use that ruler on every one of them. And you know what churches are doing now? They're measuring themselves by the last group. This Bible's coming out and measuring itself to the last Bible. And we ought to go by the ruler, friend. Amen. We're getting farther and farther away. You say, Brother Danny, what are you talking about? Well, nowadays they talk about shacking up. What does the ruler say? Hebrews 13, 4 says, Marriage is honorable. No, 
the bed and defile, whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. They talk about ERA. Ephesians 5.22 said, Wives, obey your husbands. Husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church. ERA is of the devil. All right. They talk about, do what you feel is bad. I had a woman tell me that one time. She says, now, I know in religion, you have to do what you think is right. Hogwash. That's crazy. The Bible said in Proverbs 21 and verse 2, that a man can have a way, uh, uh, that every way a man right in his own eyes or something to that effect. And it talks about how that uh, a man tries to do it, but the Lord has the right way. Talk about women preachers. Being of God. I read an article in the newspaper that somebody clipped out and gave it to me. Where the Southern Baptists are having a big argument right now over whether or not to ordain women to pastor churches. Now I'm not up here knocking. Being the Southern, that's one reason right there why I'm not Southern Baptist. When you got people that's that far away from the Word of God, friend, you done drifting, brother. You done drifting. And this person wrote this article, and this article said some of the board and the higher up places think that the, the people who write the Sunday school literature for the Southern Baptist Convention should take a more liberal view toward the role of women in the church. And that's the word they used. And said some of them are against it and some of them are in favor of it. And we feel like that it should be treated fairly. And there was not one verse of Scripture mentioned in that article. Not one. Two whole page. That one. You'd think that somebody that's a leader in a Baptist Convention have enough sense to just say, let's just see what the Bible says, don't you? But you know what, brother? They're substituting. You listen to me. Don't you get mad at me tonight. Don't you sit there and say, well, he just criticized them. You, you need to ask God to get the junk out of your ears. We you hear the truth, brother. The truth is more important than Southern Baptist. The truth is more important than Independent Baptist. The truth is more important than Methodist or whatever you were or whatever your grandma is. I'm telling you, brother, when a group says it's just what we think and you think this, we think that, and we think this, and it don't matter what the Bible says, they're off base. I don't think you ought to support anything that goes against the Word of God. You'll give an account to God for it. Me either. First Timothy said, Let the woman learn in silence. With all subjection. And I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp the authority over the man, but to be in silence. That's God's Word. You say, that's your interpretation. Hey man, I didn't do nothing but quote it. I didn't interpret it, I quoted it. You don't need to interpret that. You know what they say nowadays? They say Paul wasn't married. He was prejudiced against women. Really? And they say he had a bias against women and he it was coming out in there and that's really not inspired. But they're prejudiced against the Bible. Nobody ever gets rid of their prejudices. You swap your prejudice for another set of prejudices. You think about that for about a year. You say, well, I'm not going to be prejudiced against it. You'll wind up being prejudiced against something else. They say... We think women should be ordained. They're prejudiced against the Bible. Because the Bible said not to do it. They're prejudiced. You better stick to this book. Well, let me make up a few things. Listen. You realize what kind of mess you'd be in if it wasn't for the Bible. My soul. I thought about it just the other day, and I'm going to read you some stuff. Then I'm going to mention one more thing to close. I was out at the drugstore the other day and had to get some medicine, some uh, a prescription or something for my wife. And I was standing there in line and I was reading the, the captions on those, those magazines they sell in the drugstore. I, just, I always try, uh, look at the... Now, sometimes I don't. I say, I don't want to see that joke. But other times one of them catches me and I, I, it just, I just can't believe... That people would honestly believe that. And I had seen the other day. And really what got my attention was it had a big picture of old Twisted Sister on the front of it. 
<laughs> well, and I begin to read the captions around it, and I said, Lord, help. And I said, I'm, I'm going to preach on that. I need that. And so I looked around. <laughs> Make sure none of y'all wasn't in there. So, and I grabbed that thing and put it over here on the counter. Not really. I wasn't looking for any of y'all, but I, I really didn't want nobody to see me, to be honest with you. And I felt kind of funny that the girl was checking me out, and I said, I was, I was laughing. I was reading them things, I was just busting out laughing. And I said, man, I don't want you to think that I read these things. I said, I'm a preacher, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to do some little research on it. I'm going to preach on these things, and I... And I just need this to back up what I'm saying. I said, please don't think I read this stuff. And her and this other girl just looked at each other and grinned. And I said, honest. I, I said, and I really don't believe it. And they didn't, they kind of thought it was crazy too, looking at it. They, but you know, they say, old women, Lord, they'll run in there and read them things and take them home and really believe that stuff. Men too, I reckon. They'll say, I just can't wait till the sun comes out this weekend. Star, inquire, something. So I got that thing home, and I'm just going to read you. Now, I'll be able to tell who read that thing. Because you won't act surprised when I tell you. And I mean, I didn't read the inner contents. Some of it I just glanced at and turned my head. Man, it's pornographic. But I caught the articles, just the articles. And here's what I found out. Now, you, imagine you ain't got no Bible. You're out in the world. You're a sinner. You're lost. Here's the state of the world, brother. Here's what's going on out there in the world if you didn't know God. Now, try to imagine for a minute you ain't got no Bible. You don't know nothing about the rapture. You don't know nothing about the future. Here's what's going on according to them. You listening? Boy, he sacrifices himself to the devil. And it showed a big headline there about how this boy had sacrificed his head to the, or himself to the devil. Now, they said right under that, now listen, you ain't saved now, you ain't got no hope. Listen to this. Thirteen roaches attack human beings. Really? And I turned over and I said, I gotta see these thirteen inch roaches. And it had this guy, I don't know if it was real, it had a roach about that long, man. And it, I, it's probably plastic or something. But he had it in his hand. And it's supposed to have been dead. And this big roach, and they said that out yonder somewhere in Idaho or somewhere out west, they was conducting these experiments. And they put these giant roaches out. And the roaches was immune to any kind of, nothing could kill them. And they escaped and went out into the desert. And it was a nice little cover-up. And, the, and they wasn't going to let us all know what was going on. And they showed up out in California. And they started attacking people. And they'd killed this one old man. And they was beating, eating eat all his body off of his bones. And it wasn't nothing but a skeleton laying there. And it said men was flying helicopters. Authorities were shooting them. And they tried to attack the helicopters. Really? And they ate the tires off people's cars. And all, Really? Now, I'm telling you the truth, man. If you don't believe it, it's down there in my trash can right now. I can get it out and show it to you. And it said these 13-inch roaches was terrorizing the big cities. Now, if you wasn't saved... You didn't know no better. Something like that might bother you. Can you imagine? Ain't no wonder people's on drugs and, and taking Dar, Darvon uh, day and night and, and staying out of their mind watching TV to try to get a little enjoyment. Listen. Listen to this. And they say an anti-age potion now discovered can keep you alive to age 110. Mom killed seven kids because she can't afford the pill. Romeo, who has 3,000 lovers. Boy sacrificed himself to the devil. Told him to go. Woman's head falls off as she sleeps. <laughs> Big on the headlines. I am the father of Bigfoot baby. I said, I got to read this one. And he had this explorer from the world. And he had on a big toboggan, brother. And he looked and his things hanging up. And this guy says... And it showed pictures, they wasn't real pictures, of course, of Bigfoot. And he said, I've been fascinated by these huge creatures for many, many years. And I went up into the Himalayas and I went and found them. And he said, all of a sudden, one of the Bigfoots come over and touched the fire and took his hand back and it burned him. And he said, I put something on him and soothed it. 
And he said, they all begin to think I was God. And they all begin hanging around me. And I taught them how to make fires. And I taught them. And he said, one day, they came and presented to me a female Bigfoot. And said, it was like a token given her to me. And I didn't want to hurt their feelings. So I accepted her. A year later, she bore me a son. Sound like anything in the book of Revelation to you? Half man, the beast. And they don't even know. They don't know what they're reading. Lost and blind. Well, not only that, they said that Haley's Comet was coming through in next year, March of 86. And it may be, I don't know. I don't know how often Haley's Comet comes through. But this psychic down in Miami said that when Haley's Comet comes through in 1986 in March, that they hope it'll be the dawning of a new age. And they're hoping that the golden age will begin. And here's what they said. They said events will take place on earth as a heavenly or holy host descends to improve world conditions. My soul. Why, if you believe the Bible, you know there's going to be an unholy host descend. Yeah. Come out of the pit and make them think they're from outer space somewhere and come out and roam on this earth during the tribulation. But they don't know. They think a holy host. And they're looking for them next year. It's counterfeits. You know what? This guy went into a trance, and he said he set up his easel, and he's a painter. And I'm going to say this, and I'm going to hush. I know I've, I've been long, so I'm going to go ahead and say this, and I'm going to close in a moment. He said he went into a trance, and he started painting. And eight hours later, he came to, and there before him was a picture of the end of the world. And he had this great big old monster-looking thing, and people were running from a great big fire, and their, their flesh was gone off of their bones. And it was just like nuclear war. And he said it was Armageddon. And they said that Armageddon would come. Now listen to this. They said that Armageddon would come and burn all the people up. And good people would be spared and sleep for a thousand years. And then be reborn while hell roamed the earth for a thousand years. Now if you know the Bible, you know that is just exactly backwards. The Lord's going to come and rule on earth for a thousand years. The good people, the saved people, will be alive. And the dead are raised not. The wicked dead until the thousand years are finished. That's a counterfeit. I, I always think about it like this. You know, something, we're going to party like it's 1999. It wouldn't surprise me a bit. Don't you take me wrong. Don't you misquote me. I don't know when the Lord's coming. I know the rapture is going to come many years before the advent. At least seven. There's nothing in the Bible that says the tribulation has to start as soon as the rapture comes. We, ought, we take it for granted that it will, but there may be a time element in between them. We don't know that. The Bible don't say. We believe it will, but we can't prove it. But I wouldn't doubt a bit, and the Lord don't let them just set up a new age and a new kingdom and a new king and all that, and they think, praise the Lamb of the beast and the ram and the leopard and the bear. We have a new age. The Savior, the Messiah is here and it'll really be the Antichrist and they're just getting ready to start a brand new age and do away with...